Hello and welcome! In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create a shader that mimics raindrops effect inside of Unreal 4. I will show you how to make these ripples you see here and make them appear only in the mask areas, in this case puddles. However, this tutorial is not about puddles, I will not show you how to make them, I will only show you the raindrops themselves. So, before we dive into it, I will explain how it works on a simpler example. In this example, I'm generating a single ripple, which is fully procedural, done completely inside of Unreal 4 without using any external maps. So, how do we do that? Well, we do it step by step, reconstructing it into simpler tasks, and the first question becomes, how do we make a circle? Of course, if you create a material, and you type in circle, you're not gonna find anything. So we'll have to work with what we have inside of Unreal. And we have a node that is called Generated Band, which is basically a line generator. So as you can see, I have a line now. And there is also input coordinates, which is basically UVs. And as you probably know, UVs can be distorted. So if, for example, I plug in noise, my line becomes Oh, extremely, extremely distorted. So, let me lower the scale. So yeah, you have this. So if we can distort our line by noise, why can't we distort our line into a circle by manipulating our UVs? And here I will show you a visual explanation of what I'm about to do. If you visualize U and V separately, you will have two gradients going from 0 to 1, one from the left to the right, and another one from bottom to the top. And if you subtract 0 0.5 from them, you will get the following. You will get two gradients going from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. But what is the most important here is that both of them will have zeros in their middle. So now, if we multiply them by 2, so both of them will go from minus 1 to 1, and then we multiply them with each other, we will get the following. We will get a spherical gradient that goes from zero in its center to one on its edges. And what will happen to a line is that it will be distorted according to the spherical gradient, thus giving us a circle. So let's test it inside of the engine. So here I tested what I said earlier. I have texture coordinates, I'm subtracting 0.5 from both of its channels, then I'm breaking its channels into U and V, I multiply them with 2, multiply them with each other, add them, and here is my spherical gradient. Interesting thing is, dependent on how much you multiply it, the smaller your gradient will become. So now, if we plug it, to our generated band node. We have this weird effect. Why is that? It's because our spherical gradient is exceeding the values of 1. So we have to clamp it. So now we have what we were trying to achieve, a circle. Circle, which size we can control. The next step is to animate our ripple. Remember we had this weird effect when our UVs were exceeding the number of 1? It's because the engine reads it as styling, so the next values from 1 to 2, from 2 to 3, are basically the repetition of what we have in 0 to 1 values, and that is what we actually need for our effect. So now, if I get rid of the clump, and I plug it back again, we have this. And if we just add a panner, we already have something that looks like a ripple effect. However, it never fades. But that's a very easy fix, because we already have our spherical gradient, and now it will act as a mask. So if I have a power node, to make it less severe, let's say 25, and we're gonna invert it, 
going to multiply it. Now we have fading going on. And the best part is that you have this as your control. So if I would make it smaller, well that's probably too small, let's keep it at one. You can tweak how severe your fading is. This is like very sharp, you can see it here. It's like more soft. And you can also control it here, the size of your ripple. Now, let's apply our knowledge on a bigger scale. If we want to create multiple ripples, we need multiple spherical gradients sharing the same UV space. You probably can achieve distorted sphere-like shapes by clamping the noise and fitting that to the coordinates to make it fully procedural, but I will use a custom black and white map made in Photoshop. That's how it looks like. Let's bring it in. Texture sample. It will kind of replace what we did here. So we have only one channel. And we will use it as a mask as well. Since this is inverted compared to this, we need to invert the value of the panel as well. That's what we will have. The problem is that they all start and end at the same time, which is a problem because that doesn't happen in real life. To fix that, we need to animate the time. So each single ripple will have its own distorted time, which we will achieve with noise. So first of all, we want to bring in world position and we want to animate it. However, world position is vector 3 and current is vector 2, so we need to mask it. Component mask. Since ripples never appear on walls, so we need only the x and y axis because it is always on the floors and the roofs and such. So we will mask only those. And we will put an coordinate. We will put a value here. And now we need to plug it to our noise. However, noise requires vector 3. So now we will have to make it a vector 3. So we need to break it into the two channels and plug them in here. So now this becomes vector 3. We need to put it into position. The noise, we need to put something smaller like this, I think it will look fine. So it should be gradient and it should go from 0 to 1 as it will be our time. And since we want to add it to the time, we need only one channel because time is vector 1. So now we would pl plug it into the time input of the panner, and that's what you will have. If you think that the effect is too severe, you can always lower the noise value here. Also getting rid of the turbulence makes the effect look nicer. Sometimes you have this like white edges which you can always mask by adding power to your mask. To achieve a more complex visual effect, you can overlay the ripple effects, like it is done here. As you can see, I have two layers of ripples, they do the same thing, and then I just add them, which creates a more complex looking effect. Here I already overlaid two ripple effects by simply copying this part here. I adjusted the texture coordinates for both of them. Here I made the tiling of 10, and here is a different one, 5, it can be any other number. I also added 0 0.3 to shift the UV space a little bit to give it more variation. And I added a number of 1 to the time to also create more time variation. You can also multiply it with a noise 
but in the end you just have to add both of the ripple layers together and this will give you this overlaying effect. To be able to paint it on the mesh, just simply add vertex color node and multiply it with your result. So in the end, when you apply it to your mesh, that's what you should have. Dependent on the mesh, you will need different stylings. For this one, as you've seen, I use 10 and 7. It can be any other number, dependent on your mesh. But now you can paint it, you can erase it, and paint it again. So that's basically it. You can push this effect much further by animating the opacity of the ripples or using the result as a mask for normal maps. For example, this one. I played around with opacity, animated some intensity, and overall it looks much nicer in my opinion, much more subtle. If you don't want the ripples to be distorted, you can always paint a custom map where you have to simply color each sphere with a different shade of grey, which would give you the desired time variation. So, thank you for watching!